Let nothing be said about anyone unless it passes through the three sieves, is it true? Is it kind? Is it necessary? Let us not be surprised when we have to face difficulties. When the wind blows hard on a tree, the roots stretch and grow the stronger, let it be so with us. Let us not be weaklings, yielding to every wind that blows, but strong in spirit to resist. When I consider the cross of Christ, how can anything that I do be called sacrifice? We have all eternity to celebrate the victories but only a few hours before sunset to win them. Sometimes when we read the words of those who have been more than conquerors, we feel almost despondent. I feel that I shall never be like that. But they won through step by step, by little bits of wills, little denials of self, little inward victories, by faithfulness in very little things. They became what they are. No one sees these little hidden steps. They only see the accomplishment, but even so, those small steps were taken. There is no sudden triumph, no spiritual maturity. That is the work of the moment. It is great to be faced with the impossible, for nothing is impossible if one is meant to do it. Wisdom will be given, and strength. When the Lord leads, He always strengthens. If the praise of others elates me and their blame depresses me, if I cannot rest under misunderstanding without defending myself, if I love to be loved more than to love, to be served more than to serve, then I know nothing of Calvary love. Our loving Lord is not just present, but nearer than the thought can imagine, so near that a whisper can reach Him. All along, let us remember we are not asked to understand, but simply to obey. Thank God, He doesn't measure out grace in teaspoons. Joy is not gush. Joy is not mere jolliness. Joy is perfect acquiescence tilde acceptance, rest tilde in God's will, whatever comes. If you would live in victory, you must refuse to be dominated by the seen and the felt. Now you are deep in what seems to me a peculiarly selfless service. The spiritual training of children must be that. You work for the years you will not see. You work for the invisible all the time, but you work for the eternal. So, it is all worthwhile. Prayer is the core of the day. Take prayer out, and the day would collapse. Give me the love that leads the way the faith that nothing can dismay the hope no disappointments tire the passion that'll burn like fire let me not sink to be a clod make me thy fuel, flame of God. Our enemy is more aware than we are of the spiritual possibilities that depend upon obedience. It is not the place where we are, or the work that we do or cannot do that matters, it is something else. It is the fire within that burns and shines, whatever be our circumstances. If you have never been hurt by a word from God, it is probably that you have never heard God speak. There have been times of late when I have had to hold on to one text with all my might, it is required in stewards that a man may be found faithful. Praise God, it does not say successful. Satan is so much more in earnest than we are he buys up the opportunity while we are wondering how much it will cost. If you are ever inclined to pray for a missionary, do it at once, wherever you are. Perhaps he may be in great peril at that moment. I would rather burn out than rust out. Blessed are the single-hearted, for they shall enjoy much peace. If you refuse to be hurried and pressed, if you stay your soul on God, nothing can keep you from that clearness of spirit which is life and peace. In that stillness you will know what His will is. There is always something to be happy about if we look for it. Two men looked through prison bars, the one saw mud, the other stars. Thou art the Lord who slept upon the pillow, 
Thou art the Lord who soothed the furious sea, what matters beating wind and tossing billow if only we are in the boat with thee. Hold us quiet through the age-long minute while thou art silent and the wind is shrill, can the boat sink while thou, dear Lord, are in it, can the heart faint that waited on thy will? If a sudden jar can cause me to speak an impatient, unloving word, then I know nothing of Calvary love. For a cup brimful of sweet water cannot spill even one drop of bitter water, however suddenly jolted. I think of the love of God as a great river, pouring through us even as the waters pour through our ravine at flood time. Nothing can keep this love from pouring through us, except of course our own blocking of the river. Do you sometimes feel that you have got to the end of your love for someone who refuses and repulses you? Such a thought is folly, for one cannot come to the end of what one has not got. We have no store of love at all. We are not jugs, we are riverbeds. It is a safe thing to trust him to fulfill the desires which he creates. Those who think too much of themselves don't think enough. The saddest thing one meets is a nominal Christian. Thank God for the battle verses in the Bible. We go into the unknown every day of our lives, and especially every Monday morning, for the week is sure to be a battlefield, outwardly and inwardly in the unseen life of the Spirit, which is often by far the sternest battlefield for souls. Either way, the Lord your God goes before you, he shall fight for you. God bless you and utterly satisfy your heart with himself. He said love as I have loved you. We cannot love too much. The night I sailed for China, March 3, 1893, my life, on the human side, was broken, and it never was mended again. But he has been enough. Missionary life is simply a chance to die. The word comfort is from two Latin words meaning with and strong. He is with us to make us strong. Comfort is not soft, weakening commiseration, it is true, strengthening love. God, harden me against myself. A cup brimful of sweetness cannot spill even one drop of bitter water, no matter how suddenly jarred. We profess to be strangers and pilgrims, seeking after a country of our own, yet we settle down in the most UN stranger-like fashion, exactly as if we were quite at home and meant to stay as long as we could. I don't wonder apostolic miracles have died. Apostolic living certainly has. But God is the God of the waves and the billows, and they are still his when they come over us, and again, and again we have proved that the overwhelming thing does not overwhelm. Once more by his interposition deliverance came. We were cast down, but not destroyed. We must look upon the world, with all its delights and all its attractions, with suspicion and reserve. We who love our Lord and whose affections are set on heavenly things voluntarily and gladly lay aside the things that charm and ravish the world, that our hearts may be ravished with the things of heaven, that our whole being may be poured forth in constant and unreserved devotion in the service of the Lord who died to save us. If I am afraid to speak the truth lest I lose affection, or lest the one concerned should say, you do not understand, or because I fear to lose my reputation for kindness, if I put my own good name before the other's highest good, then I know nothing of Calvary love. But all the great staining temptations, to selfishness, ambition, and other strong sins that violently affront the soul, appear first in the region of the mind, and can be fought and conquered there. We have been given the power to close the door of the mind. We can lose this power through disuse or increase it by use, by the daily discipline of the inner man in things which seem small and by reliance upon the word of the Spirit of Truth. It is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. It is as though he said, learn to live in your will, not in your feelings. If I say, yes, I forgive, but I cannot forgive, as though the God, who twice a day washes all the sands on all the shores of all the world, could not wash such memories from my mind, 
then I know nothing of Calvary love. Even though we must walk in the land of fear, there is no need to fear. The power of his resurrection comes before the fellowship of his sufferings. God hold us to that which drew us first, when the cross was the attraction, and we wanted nothing else. Love accepts the trying things of life without asking for explanations. It trusts and is at rest. If I take offense easily, if I am content to continue in cold unfriendliness, though friendship be possible, then I know nothing of Calvary love. Do not fight the thing in detail, turn from it. Look ONLY at your Lord. Sing. Read. Work. Nothing is worth doing at all, nothing is worth writing, which does not do something which will last. If I can enjoy a joke at the expense of another, if I can in any way slight another in conversation, or even in thought, then I know nothing of Calvary love. And shall I pray thee change thy will, my Father, until it be according unto mine? But, no, Lord, no, that never shall be, rather I pray thee blend my human will with thine. I pray thee hush the hurrying, eager longing, I pray thee soothe the pangs of keen desire, see in my quiet places, wishes thronging, forbid them, Lord, purge, though it be with fire. He hath never failed thee yet. Never will his love forget. O fret not thyself nor let thy heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. The best training is to learn to accept everything as it comes, as from him whom our soul loves. The tests are always unexpected things, not great things that can be written up, but the common little rubs of life, silly little nothings, things you are ashamed of minding one scrap. Can we follow the Saviour far, who have no wound or scar? If I belittle those whom I am called to serve, talk of their weak points in contrast perhaps with what I think of as my strong points, if I adopt a superior attitude, forgetting who made thee to differ. And wottest thou that thou hast not received, then I know nothing of Calvary love. Which quote did you like the most? Share your opinion in the comments below. Subscribe and don't miss out the chance to see the next video.